had to remove the uh, yeah. cover out around it so I could get to it. Uh, this ball came in. Uh, he has this big 8x8 strap on top of it because it doesn't latch down. It's just off down the highway. And that's why I have this more sport hood because it just ripped it off. So, kind of have to make do with it. So, fog it. If yours has one of those flash covers on it, or it has this, we'll take it off so you can see the carburetor. And the reason why you can't fog it without it running, that oil and all the cylinders and set it off. You can spray a bunch of it down in there, but it all comes down in there. So we use the little project on that. And once you start spraying this into the motor, down it'll start bogging down. What you want to do is you want to spray enough of it in there until it starts to smoke. And that's how you know you've got uh, enough of this in there. And then ideally what you want to do is you want to spray enough of this in there to kill the motor and shut the key off. That's one thing I have a habit of not doing is shut the key off because then it drains out the battery. So I'll go ahead and throttle it up. It just helps kind of speed that up. take roughly half a can or so uh, but ideally I look to see when it starts smoking pretty good and all you're doing is you're just spraying the fogging oil under the carburetor now of course if it's fuel injected you won't be doing this because it'll it can ruin the injectors and the fuel system See, now you can see it starting to smoke pretty good. And then the killer. And that's all you have to do. Uh, uh, we were having a little bit of car problems this summer. Did it, did it help? Um, this kind of, it'll run good for half an hour. Dog out, run good. Uh, um, this will fix the running issue. This just puts an extra layer of oil in all your cylinders and stuff like that. So when it sets for a long period of time, it doesn't start falling in extra water, which then rusts the water. We only think about that once in summer. Yeah, I, I don't use this in my lawnmower. When I go to put it up for the winter time, I use it in my snow blower. Um, I don't really use it. That's all you have to do to fog. Fog your body. Yeah. Um, or anything that has a carburetor that sets for a long time, as long as it's not fuel injected, you can use it. Motorcycles, uh, riding long motors, stuff like that. Just don't use it when it's got fuel. Alright. Um, after you have fogged your motor, what you'll want to do next, which can get, you have to be kind of careful so you don't burn yourself. It's a little warm, but the water coming out is going to be a lot warmer. Uh, let me put this back on so I don't end up losing the net. You guys might be able to see this blue plug, blue plug right here. Um, you guys over here should be able to see the blue plug right there. Now on your engine blocks, they're normally really close, so 
you find the blue one, you just reach down and either go forward or backwards, and you'll find the engine block one. Like over here on this side, it's right here. So you just come down and you'll find it. Um, I'll show you guys over here on this side. So what's the blue one? It's the drain. the drain. Okay. So this one up here, these ones up here drain the exhaust manifolds, and then the ones down below drain the block. Okay. Now if you don't drain those, they'll crack. You'll see cracks across, and then when you're running your motor, water is running out of it. Are they blue? Yeah. Okay. Now, you can have a variation. Uh, that can be brass. That, yeah. That, that big blue white boat, the seabird over there, it's got uh, twin ovals in it, and one had the brass plug, one had the uh, brass peacock in it, and then the other one had like some kind of pipe that was pinched off, a copper pipe. That was Somebody lost off. one and made something. Yeah. Is there so, one in the back of those also? No. Um, sometimes there will be one right here, and there is one right here. What this is, is this hose, it feeds into your engine block. These two hoses are the return from your exhaust. And then this hose right here that runs down along the side is your water pump hose. So the water comes in, hits this manifold, and then it gets dispersed out. Or wait a minute, this one's your exhaust. This one's the water pump one. Um, Depending on the variation of your boat, um, sometimes a water pump one comes up from here and then it attaches in here. Um, but your your big main one right here is your engine, and then usually these two small ones are your exhaust manifold. If you just kind of look at your motor and familiarize yourself, watch where the piping goes. And figure out where it is. If I don't have a little plug on the bottom of that main hose, you can just undo the hose itself, right? Yeah, you can do it one of two ways. Um, the reason why they put this down here is because it's kind of like a toilet trap. And what will happen is the water will sit in there. So you can take it off here and bend the hose down and drain the water out that way. Or you can take the hose off here, pop it off, drain it out that way. But you'll still have to take it off up here to uh, fill it up with things. Um, so you just recommend just go ahead and just do that one up there then? Yeah, you'll have to take this one off to fill the block with any right. things because you can't do it from at an angle. Right. So sometimes we see it's just a one hose that comes down or it's got uh, a blue plug right there. Um, the engine, usually the side that has the starter, um, the plug is a little more further forward on the motor just because of the, the starter and stuff like that. Um, if the starter does end up getting wet, your starter will last for about six months and then you'll have to change the uh, Wet starter uh, in marine applications, they only last about six months after they've gotten wet. Um, we can tell that a lot of times. Um, somebody bringing a motor, the motor won't start. All right, so we'll get in it and we'll actually see a water line across the back of the transom. Like, yeah, that motor was underwater. Well, yeah, but it ran fine after that. Well, the starter goes out within about six months after So that's part of the reason why they move the, the plug a little farther forward on the motor. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is uh, drain drain the block and the exhaust, and then I'll drain the little holes here. Uh, you always want to start with doing the, the engine block first because if you do your exhaust manifold, you're going to have the hot water running down on you and it's going to kind of burn you. Depends on how long you drain the motor for. It depends on how hot the water you're going to get and what it's coming out. Will it matter that you still get your water on out here? No, it doesn't matter. Okay. Because it won't pump up through. You should have to shut it off. Yeah. There's a, a red, red valve handle. It's part way up the pipe. Yeah. Thank you. I had to learn the hard way. Uh, my teacher, Jim, he was, he was always telling me to do the engine block first. I had ran a motor for like half an hour. I did the exhaust and then tried to do that. And just, 
<laughs> yeah, it was just, I had to wait until it drained out. John. Now, John. You should hear a good water flow coming out. And if it's like kind of trickling, uh, these tools, these are great for removing uh, hoses. Yeah. What you'll do is you'll just kind of stick it up in there. And if it's clogged or it has debris in it, it'll help clear that out and then flow it out. If it gets to a point where the hole's almost closed up, then we'll have to kind of clean it out by throwing it out and stuff like that. Where do you get that tool? Uh, you can buy it from any uh, hardware store. Or okay, I've never seen store. one like it. So. Um, they're called uh, radiator hose picks. Um, you can get them to snap on. I got this from OEM, so you don't need to spend a whole lot on them, but they make life a lot easier. They're both draining pretty good. I always like to make sure there's nothing up in there. Now, one thing with these is when you take them out, make sure you have that black rubber washer in there. If you don't, you go to put them back in, it'll leak, 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 leak. And you can break these off in there, so don't over tighten them. Because then you have to kind of tap them them out. This one's here, and they brought the blocks down here. Yeah, that one just kind of tripped out a little. Now to put the antifreeze back, put the antifreeze in it, you're not going to use the bucket. He's going to pour it out. Yeah, you'll feed it into the hose. Bring you do it through all four? I do it through all four. The reason why I do it through the pickup is there's water still in that line. Okay. And so if you pour it in there, it'll come out your lower. So you should get a little bit out, of pink. Out by your prop? Yeah. Okay. So if you just do, how many gallons will it take to do all four lines? Two or three? It just takes two. Okay. We use two. Um, smaller motors, you'll get about one and a half and then you'll start getting antifreeze coming out. But um, we usually do half in each exhaust and then one in the whole engine. Uh, one gallon in the engine and half a gallon in each exhaust. So if, you, if you undo the big one right there by you, yeah, that one, and you pour it through there, won't it come out, doesn't it come out the other hose this way or not? No, no, it'll go down. This is just like a, a drainage right here. For that and it, what it'll do is it'll just go down in there and start filling up the engine. Uh, okay, so it doesn't come through these hoses on. So it's not like a complete system where. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's not a complete. Okay. So it's John. This one out. And I always like to make sure. Sometimes the exhaust ones, there's not a lot of water that comes out. And sometimes you do get quite a bit of water. It's just all due to the design of your boat. Now that's usually the engine block is a lot warmer than the exhaust, but hot's hot to me. So once you get it drained, um, I usually just go ahead and take the hoses off. So if there's any suction, any water being held up, it'll help release it. Go ahead and do that. I hate chasing these hose clamps, so when I take them off, I tighten them back up kind of onto the hose. Now the three I've taken off, exhaust, exhaust, and this is your engine block. The hose that usually runs the length of the motor, whether it comes down and goes that way, or turns up here 
Um, there's some that actually come down and around the other side of the motor. It just depends on what motor you have. That's your water pump hose or your intake hose. So this is the source of where the water comes in. And I always put just a little bit of antifreeze in there, which will help kind of push the water back out. The engine block and your two exhausts is a must um, to protect your motor. I always put a little bit back in here so it pushes the water out so I don't have any water trapped in that line. I'd rather have antifreeze than water in there. This is also where these little picks come in handy. Because sometimes these hoses get really stuck on there and they're a pain to get off. Now, since this one has this drain here, you know, yeah, you're fine. Otherwise, you'd have to bend it down, you tweak it, and then dump the rest of the water out because that's like a little toilet trap type deal. Just want to kind of break it. So, so even though bending it down, you're not getting, you're getting most of it out and then you're pouring the antifreeze yeah, in. Yeah, then so. you pour the antifreeze in it and it'll... Because I know on mine, getting to that bottom hose clamp on that big hose was just going to be a nightmare yeah. the way the seat is. Some, some of them are. Um, I got lucky on this one because it just came in yesterday. They were looking for kind of a, a boat with plugs because all those have central drains. Yeah. And so this one happened to come in. They're like, all right, you get to use this one. And it had that housing around it. Out. Yeah. You just undo the screws, pull it out. Yeah, mine, you'd have to tear apart this whole bench seat. Yeah. I've had to do that a couple of times and it's not fun. Yeah. So there's your engine, your two exhausts, and then I just like to push some one some antifreeze back down the water intake. Um, I always like to pull the hoses off, then put the plugs back in so in case there's water trapped or anything like that. Opening up the lines will help any of that water drain out. You'll find out real quick when you don't have your plugs in, when you start to fill it up, you'll you'll hear water running, you're like, oh man. So, just put the plugs back in. Just pull Yeah, and on this motor, the oil filter is back here, down on the bottom. So if you if you were to change your oil, the filter is on the back bottom side. So whenever I'm doing a motor, I always look to see is it central drain? If not, where are the plugs at? And hopefully, they're these blue plugs. So hopefully, in your boat, you have the blue plugs. It makes it a lot easier to find, easier to drain the block. If you got the old brass can you ones, get those to replace. Uh, yes, Depends you can. Depends on the threads, I guess. Well, we've got uh, adapters that yeah. change to that. So that big blue bird out there. Um, on the one with the pinched off hose, all I did was just get an adapter in one of these and screwed it on. So he's got a new blue plug. So I know mine's got some kind of some kind of machine screw in it. I haven't been able to. I haven't gotten under to look at it real close. Yeah. And could you grab my funnel out there real quick? Now? I already pulled the foil off of them so I didn't have to mess with that. Just... Put some water. And this is the intake hose um, where the water pump is. And here in a little bit, you might hear a splash of water coming out there. Yeah, coming out back. More than likely, it'll be pink, but it might be a light pink. Does that 
throw the top off when you're done? Or? No, it, it doesn't fill it 100 percent. You're just pouring um, basically a gallon in there, though. Yeah. Um, and if if you end up overfilling it, then it's not gonna break or hurt anything. Uh, the exhaust ones I've overfilled a couple of times on smaller motors, and then what I end up doing is once I get over full, you just plug it into this little manifold here, and then it'll. Well, yeah, it'll level itself off. See, this one's... Since it runs pretty flat across the top of the motor, it's pretty full. Is it going out? Yeah. Um, generally, when I do one of the exhausts, you'll hear kind of like a splash or a drain. But it might not because I've got the, uh, the muff still on it. But if you go back there and look, it might be dripping pink. Cause I've had a couple of the guys be like, uh, you got paint coming out the water pump area. Like, I put antifreeze down to that one. I will put about half in here. I think ideally these motors will take, if you ran them on the bottle, it'll take about three gallons. Those two motors, they'll run them on the bottle. I know that Chaparral will take about four gallons of antifreeze. So why do they not run this one on the bottle? Just due to the drainage. Because it won't... When you run it on the bottle, you leave your central main drain open. So then you can see when it's pumping. And then after it's pumping, then you can put the drain back on. Yeah, I put these back on. You can... Run it off of the bottle, but it's it's easier to do it this way because there's so many drains. Because of the drain plugs, so, um, and it's also so you don't create a void. But whatever we have drain plugs, this is how we do it. But if it's got a central drain, you'll leave that drain open, and then once you see paint coming out the drain while the motor's running, you just shut it off. But otherwise, you do it this way. And this way also, you, you only need one person. Or with those, when they run them off the bottle, you have to have somebody controlling the bottle and running the boat at the same time. Because then once pink starts coming out the exhaust, then you shut off the boat and someone has to shut off the bottle or else you keep drinking that in the and once the bottle. This is also one main show deal, or one person show. This one might end up filling on, on this side. Nope. Then go over. Then you just put the hoses back on and you don't look at to make sure it's all pink coming out. What's that? You don't make sure it's all pink coming out. No, no pink coming out of the other one. What's staying in? Yeah, it's staying in. The only one that came out was the one that runs long. Yeah, after chasing these post clamps, it's easier to clamp them back on themselves. It. Now this bottle, this motor, has the monitor bottle right here. That's what he was talking about. Um, so if you were to drain the, the uh, gear 